Hello and welcome to Solo Board Gaming Presents The Halls of Hegra. A brand new game just coming to Kickstarter at the beginning of August 2022 from Tompet Games and designed by Petter Schalke Olsen. I'm very lucky. I've been sent a prototype copy to preview. So thanks to Tompet Games. Straight from the off, I've had a ball with this. It's very different. It is unique. But most of us won't have heard of the Halls of Hegra. So to paint the scene, to get us into the mood, let's just quickly go back for 30 seconds to April 1940, Norway, the village of Hegra, not far from Narvik, where this incredible, desperate defence took place. Run VT. So, welcome back. I hope that helps just a little bit orientate you as to the amazing defence that took place here in the village of Hegra. And Hegra contained an old fortress that hadn't been used for around 15 years. It was overgrown, its equipment was broken, it was buried in the snow. But there were a corps of 50 soldiers who were determined to resist the oncoming Wehrmacht and gathered around them another 200 or so volunteers and initially in the first phase you're going to prepare the fortress you're going to try and recruit those volunteers and fight the doubt that's going to creep into everyone's mind how can we defend against the whole of the Wehrmacht but you're determined to defend so you start digging out this fortress repairing the defensives digging through the snow sending out patrols to gather supplies and then the mobilization phase is over and the next phase is going to take place and that's going to be the first attack phase where you're going to be trying to defend the village itself but eventually you're going to have to retreat back into that fortress and hope that you've prepared its defenses well enough to then hold out against the siege the artillery the constant german infantry attacks and the bombing from the air. Make no mistake, many of the warfare mechanics in this game are abstracted, but the theme remains constant throughout the whole thing. This is definitely not a theme skin wrapped around tried and tested mechanics. Instead, this is a theme, a historical event, bringing in the best mechanics to illustrate that theme and to give you the feeling of that heroic defense. Okay, so let's start by having a look around the board and what you actually get in the game. That's what you wanna know. What do I get in the box? Okay, now the first thing to draw your attention to is that this is a prototype. And some things could indeed change. I don't think a lot's gonna change. I think much of it is gonna be as you see here, I do know that some of the wooden discs, these wooden counters here and here, are going to change colour. I think the doubt discs here, instead of orange, are going to be pink. And I think the soldier discs here, the red ones, are going to be an olive drab khaki colour. And maybe I have seen icons being applied to these wooden discs as well. But not 100% sure this is a prototype. Just going back to the, uh, the wooden discs, the wooden discs are mainly your defenders. These are the guys that are going to be carrying out all the actions in the game, doing supply runs, defending the walls, and it goes like this. These red ones 
are soldiers. OK, and we start with some soldiers over here on the board. More about the board later. Then we have volunteers. The blue discs are volunteers. These are volunteers that we've managed to recruit, hopefully, from the local village. And as we recruit them, with them, they will bring supplies. Now, the yellow cubes are supplies. The black wooden disc here is an officer, the only officer you'll have in the game. The rest of your discs are here in one of the three draw bags, these lovely cotton draw bags. I've put them in this black one. So again, you can see volunteer discs in there. You can see soldiers. You can see medics. Like so, and green ones, hunters. Now each of them have different capabilities, but you can also see we start with a doubt disc in our recruitment draw bag. And we have plenty more doubt discs here that could go into that draw bag. And as we're trying to recruit more soldiers, volunteers, doctors, hunters, that kind of thing to help in the defense of the fort, we'll be seeing more and more doubt from the people of the village as the German forces close in. This whole area here, which you need to account for at the side of your board, is called the reserve. And in that reserve, we also have more large square tokens. These are cardboard tokens, like so. Some of them double-sided that will be used either on the board or to go into the hit bag, which we'll talk about in a moment. For instance, there you have German artillery tokens over there. You have miss tokens that can also go into that hit bag. And you could be lucky enough to draw a miss. Then over here, we have more types of supply. These are different kinds of supplies, which we can try and go for as we do supply runs across the terrain, through the village, through the German patrols. And talking about the Wehrmacht here, these wooden meeples lined up. These will be the German infantry, which will be attacking our garrison throughout much of the game. And more and more of them will come onto the board. And we have five dice here, five D6. Now, those bags, there are three draw bags. Here they are. There's a red one, a black one, and a blue one. I've used them like so. I've mentioned the recruitment bag, which I've put there. These, this bag I'm going to use for German patrol counters. Have a look at these. These are German patrol counters. There they are. And it gives us the positions in which to place them on the board as the German patrols start to dominate our board making our supply runs more and more difficult. That's the drawback for those. And then we've got the hit bag here where many of those damage counters, German aircraft counters and so on, and artillery counters will go into the hit bag. More wooden pieces, you have German artillery that's lined up like so, none of it's arrived yet, but these are nice wooden artillery pieces. As you can see there, really cool. So they're lined up, ready to come onto the board. And here are lines of German bomber sorties, which will also eventually, during the siege phases, get added to that hit bag. And you could be drawing out bomber sorties that are gonna assault your position. Now, just at the top there, I've arranged the five decks of event cards. Yeah, five decks of event cards. We'll have a much closer look at these in a moment, but basically they're separated into mobilization phase, first attack phase, siege one, siege two, and the last stand over there. But we'll be having a really close look at those. And another little bit of space you need off board, just over there we have high morale deck and a low morale deck. 
and we'll be drawing from those depending on how our morale at the end of each turn is doing, whether it's high morale or low morale. And of course you have this amazing board, one of the best design boards I've played with for a very, very long time. The board has made the whole game an absolute sheer joy to play because it does feel like uh, like a command board. And in fact, it looks a bit like one. Look, imagine, because you are the commander of this small unit of guys that are going to defend this position with your lives, okay? So here is your desk. That's how you've got to view it. It's your desk. And you've got bits of stuff all over the desk. Yes, you know, you've got your map taped to your desk. Look, bits of tape there. Uh, you've got a cartridge case here uh, and here. A bit naughty. You should always collect your brass. And <laughs> it really has that feel of a command center. A lot of the mechanics here, for instance, are Euro-style worker placement. But I don't even like using that because, well, of course it is. You are the commander and you have all these troops and volunteers at your disposal. That's your job. You will be setting them tasks. Some people are going to have to repair the gun, dig the snow to unearth long buried equipment, to go out on supply runs. So, of course, you'll be placing these defenders, giving them various tasks around this entire board as you go. So it all makes so much perfect sense. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at a couple of elements. Now, here's your map and one of the first things that struck me was how beautifully illustrated it was. The nice choice of subdued colours, beautifully illustrated trees and buildings. Here you have the actual fortress itself. From here is where your patrols are going to go out on the supply runs. And this is what I meant earlier when I said the theme of the game is not just a thin skin over old mechanics. It's completely built the other way around. It's the historical theme here that's the most important thing about this map and about the whole game. So the fortress then. I'm not 100% sure that you can see this bit clearly enough, but... The main part of the fortress is here. There's the archway. Let's take a look. Here are some walls and gun positions. Beautifully done on the map. And for more detail, there's more buildings and houses here on the outskirts of the town and Hegra village itself with its rail track to the station, like so. And up at top left there, you have Varnes Airfield. I'm sure I've not pronounced that correctly, but Varnes Airfield, which historically the fortress did try to bombard once they could get some more elevation on their very few guns that they had. And in between all of that, you have the landscape. These are going to be our supply dumps at the top, four of them with different kinds of supplies. There's only one of them that at the start of the game is populated with supplies. That's this one. And these rows, look, are colour coded. And they're colour coded because each colour corresponds to a different phase of the game. Green, phase one, mobilisation phase. This is where the German patrols in the mobilization phase will start to appear. Phase two, yellow, here, is the first attack phase. German patrols will be populating these areas here and getting closer to us. And as I mentioned before, this is a typical German patrol marker, like so. Phase three, blue, siege one. This is the first turn of the actual siege. This is when the bombardments will start from artillery and the assault from the air. And siege two, the final phase here. Now, 
This isn't like a state, states of siege thing where the patrols are getting closer and closer and therefore more and more dangerous. It's not that. It's not about that. Instead, what those patrols are doing, there are dotted lines that are joining these circles up, plotting routes to the various supply depots. And each turn, we're probably going to be wanting to do supply runs and move some of our troops out along these runs to try and get to supplies. And the more spots that these German patrol markers occupy, the more difficult it's going to be for us to find a way through to the supplies. And depending on the suspicion rating at that, at that particular point of the game, can we sneak past the patrol without being seen? Do we have to fight the patrol and risk losing our volunteers? So basically, each phase as the German patrols are starting to occupy certain parts of the board, they're making those trips for supplies more and more difficult, more and more dangerous. And of course, we have the weather track. We're going to start off cloudy, but it could turn to snow. If it turns to snow, we move the snow marker up like so, so it gets deeper and deeper. And our movement points are reduced. Sunny weather, our movement points at their maximum. If we're coming back with supplies, we can move less spaces. I've already mentioned the German aircraft, the bombers, lined up and waiting to join the assault when the siege starts. And the same for the German artillery, which will start to populate the spaces on the board here, as well as German patrol markers. We start off with just a few defenders. We start off with three soldiers, two volunteers and an officer. And as commander here at your desk, as I said, you'll be giving them orders to carry out various tasks to prepare our positions. Once they've carried out a task, they become tired. Do you see? Then they go from tired to rest and then from rest back to ready and they can be used again. Now, this part of the board is a little bit genius. I've really enjoyed this. So the mobilization phase, this is the side that we'll have showing. We have extra actions here, look, open new supply routes, negotiate. By the way, all the actions that we can carry out during a turn are denoted on the board by Norwegian flag. So any Norwegian flag you can see denotes an action that you can actually carry out. Here we have our defensive positions around the fortress itself and the defensive positions start broken. You see that crack there? They're in need of repair. Defensive position C and we have to repair that before we can occupy that position. And the same here, A and B. And those defensive positions, you're not going to need them during the mobilization phase. But as soon as the first attack starts, you will need to be able to man those positions. Your fear and doubt can creep up during this phase. And it can affect how many of those orange doubt discs are going to be placed into the recruitment bag. And... Once the mobilization phase is over, and it's only three turns, there's only three turns in the mobilization phase, you turn it over to first attack. Say so there, first attack, completely different again. Now, you can see from the sketch there of the village and the railway station, this is where we're defending the village and we'll be retreating back to the fortress and we'll be being followed up by German infantry, which will populate this part of the board. And this is a great mechanic and I'll show you how that works, the way the Germans assault us again and again. And once that phase is finished, remove that entirely and it morphs again into the main defensive part of the game where most of, or much 
of the combat is going to take place. Many more actions here. Machine gun, reckless defence, lots more attacks by the Germans as they populate this part of the board and creep through the forests and the gullies up the hill towards our defenders up here. That's going to get really, really tough. And that's for Siege 1 and Siege 2. We saw a couple of the actions that we could do in the mobilization phase, such as negotiate and open up new supply routes. And there's a flag there, look, so we could be also trying to repair these defensive positions. But there's lots more action options that you have around the board. Let's take a look at these. Lots more actions. Look for the Norwegian flags. We can fire our artillery. And we could fire it at the infantry that are assaulting us up the hill. At a certain map row to hit German patrols. Or artillery pieces, counter battery fire. Or at Vans Airfield, where our artillery strike will, can have various effects on the game. But before we fire our ancient artillery pieces, we need to repair the gun. Gun number one, look, has three items of damage on it. We need to be removing that damage before we can start using the gun. And that's going to take manpower. So let's look down here. This whole row is called maintenance. Now in maintenance, we can shovel snow, we can repair, we can bolster our defenses, we can promote a defender, or we can inspire others. And all of them have a great effect on the game. Shoveling snow. By shoveling snow, we get to move that snow marker further back to the left. And each time we reach the end, these are shuffled and we can take the top card to reveal, look at this, hidden tools. Repair one damage tile or add one miss counter to the hit bag. Really useful, but also water. New supplies. Ah, counter patrol. Now counter patrol, we find that skill and it goes onto the board. See the Norwegian flag? It's given us yet another action option. We can set up counter patrols to counter the German patrols that are on the map. Or we could find a radio, which improves our morale. A second artillery piece could come into action. A medicine cabinet can add to our actions options as well. The map room. Draw that and we could actually rearrange this pile and look at the first three. All really useful stuff. And thematically, this is what the defenders had to do. To go from room to room, get into each room and find all this kit that's been stored there for nearly 20 years. So that's shoveling snow. Repair. We can remove a damage tile from a certain position. That takes two defenders to carry out a single repair. But you can put four defenders on it and repair two positions. Bolster. We can add a miss tile to that hit bag or we can increase our fortress defense up one level. We could promote a defender, for instance, from volunteer to soldier or inspire the guys and move our morale marker up. And deep underground, we have our infirmary where we're gonna treat all our injured soldiers and we'll see how this works as well. We have spaces as well, look for med medicine cabinet, map room, radio, which are to be found from those buried in the snow over there. We have three beds available and we'll show in detail how that works. We can send out a supply run onto the map, as I explained earlier, to get past the patrols, bring back more supplies. We dug this out of the snow, the counter patrol. Then we come onto morale. The morale track will move up. 
for good morale. So we'll draw cards from the high morale deck or our morale will go down and we'll draw cards from the low morale deck. And finally, in the bottom corner here, our marker starts off at honorable surrender in the middle. The marker could go up to surrender or even the top there, unconditional surrender. Or a better than historical result would be truce or a German retreat. We start there in the middle on honorable surrender. And then finally, at the bottom, you have the turn track. Now the turn track shows the different phases of the game. And the marker here, like so. Again, it's color coded. The first three turns in green is mobilization. Then in yellow, first attack. Each one of those is only three turns. Then we go to blue, siege one. It's only two turns. And the final three turns, siege two, if you can survive that far. And if you're wondering what these German crosses are, each time you move the counter onto a square, onto a turn where it has German crosses, you put that many German patrols onto the map. There's two there, there's three there, and so on. Two here throughout the game. And in a nutshell, that's a very quick run around the components and what you actually get in the game. Let's have a little bit of a look now without too much detail into how the phases actually work. So here we go, we're not playing through this, we're just demonstrating some of the mechanics and how they change through the various phases. So at the beginning of every single phase anyway, regardless, we take an event card and we take an event card from the correct pile, depending on what phase we're in. We've started in the mobilization phase. Let's have a look at the mobilization deck. Slightly out of reach up there. Okay, this is the mobilization deck and you have 12 cards in the mobilization deck. Now, during the mobilization phase, there are three turns. So you're only gonna choose three of these cards. And don't forget, they've been really shuffled. So right from the off, you can see how replayable this game is and how it'll change every single time. Have a quick look at some of the cards. And the first thing that hits you are the thematic illustrations. Look at that, the Germans moving through the misty, snow-covered woods, the tunnels, the cold, the doubt and despair, the fear, the patrolling, communications, raiding the village, the stores, discovered our supplies, and so on. So what you do is you draw the top card. So we'll draw the top card, place the other cards back, and let's see what we have. So you resolve everything on the card in order. I hope I'm getting that in some kind of focus. So first of all, the weather. Sunny, yes. Okay, so we move the weather marker to sunny. That's good, because now we can move up to six spaces on the map. This, not so good. We have to resolve this word for word, exactly as it says on the card. You must move the fear marker two levels up and the doubt marker one level up. Why? One of the other officers are talking about surrendering to the Germans. So fear and doubt rise. Not good. There's the fear marker going up two levels from three to five. And there's the doubt marker going up one level. It's still only on number one. But as it goes up any more, it'll be two, three, and so on. Now, the iconography reminds us that 
we have to add doubt counters to the bag and then draw from the recruit bag. So first of all, we add doubt counters to the recruit bag. So we get the draw bag for our recruit. So this is my recruit bag, okay? Now into that, we have to add that one doubt disc. I think these are the ones that are gonna be pink in the actual game. Our doubt track is on one down here, just off camera. So we add one doubt disc to the bag, shake them up, and now we draw from the bag. Now, the thing is, this is a push your luck thing. I now know that there are two doubt counters in there. If I draw a doubt counter, my recruitment is over for this turn because I've come across doubt in the village and a lack of recruits. And I can draw up to four counters. So do I keep drawing until I get a doubt counter? Let's see what happens. First one, red, that's a soldier. Second one, blue, that's a volunteer, that's good. I don't want to draw a doubt disc. What happens is if I draw doubt now, I can only take one of those recruits instead of both of them. Do you see what I mean? But I have to push my luck, I have to. There are not many turns available for recruiting. A third counter, that's a hunter. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna push my luck to four because these are a couple of good recruits here. And as I said before, if I draw a doubt disc, I will only be able to have one of them. But if I stop now, I can have all three. So that's the push your luck element of recruitment. So meanwhile, I can add these guys to my ready pile like so, and as the volunteer, the blue one comes along, and this is another reason why I wanted to stop drawing from the bag. Coming from the village, he brings some supplies with him. Does that make sense? Yes, <laughs> I love that. So much thought gone into even this very first action of the game, and that mobilization event card is now discarded. Now, as commander underground at my desk here, I now have to issue orders, issue actions to all of my guys. Come on, we have to get ready for this. Now, what'll happen in this order, if I get it right, is I can move any defenders from the rest position here to the ready position. That's free. I could then spend supplies, in other words, feed the guys up to move them from tired to the ready position. Or across here, I could spend morale, in other words, lower the morale of the guys by pushing them hard to move them from the tired to the ready position. And you will be doing that desperately in the later stages of the game. And then finally, if there are any left here in the tired position, I can move two of them freely to the rest position. But for now, this is what we have. So quickly, I need to give orders to my guys. I'm going to open up new supply routes. So that's gonna take two people. So I'm going to use two volunteers for that. Okay, so they will open up new supply routes. A new supply route. Next, can't fire my guns or my gun because it's all broken. We definitely need to do repairs and we need to shovel snow to find equipment. So the best guy for shoveling snow here, look, is a hunter. So I'm gonna take my hunter, place him on there. And if it's a hunter, he'll get two actions. Any other disc would only get one action. He can get two actions. And in fact, I'm gonna put one more disc on there 
So we'll have two actions, yeah, three, a total of three actions for shoveling snow. Okay, let's carry on. Repairing, we said we needed to repair, didn't we? So two soldiers are gonna go into the repair and two into bolster. Oh, officer can't do that. It's crossed out there, look. But officer can inspire. I think that's just off camera down here. I'm gonna move officer down to inspire. And one guy, soldier, is gonna go out on a supply run. There he is. You see, as I said before, anything with a Norwegian flag on it is an action that's doable. We don't have to worry about the infirmary. There's no one there. So open up a new supply route. How do we do that? Let's go. Quite simple. There are three supply dumps not yet on the board. So we choose from our reserves one category of supplies. I've chosen the hearts. These are morale. So if we each time we retrieve these kind of supplies, it'll boost our morale. I now choose to put them into one of the supply dumps, which is there, the heart is on that one over there. So I now have a supply route opened up here and here. The two guys that were opening up that supply run on that action space now go into the tired section on the board. Next one, let's shovel that snow. These were the guys shoveling snow. It takes one person to do it. But if one of them is the hunter, he gets to do it twice. This extra guy gets to do it the once. You can put as many tokens on these action spaces as you wish, as long as you achieve at least the minimum stated on the board. Okay, three spaces. So. The snow marker then is moved three spaces to the right. Sorry, to the left. One, we're digging through the snow. Two, three. We flip the top snow card. What have we found? Only a field telephone. Okay, field telephone, we found it. So we're gonna place this on the board in its space there, field telephone. And what that gives us, because it increases communication around the fort to our defenses, we'll get plus one on each die roll when we're rolling for defense. We could also suppress an additional two German infantry attackers. This is during the phase of first attack or siege, that kind of thing. But only if we repair that side of the comms, because when you first put it on the board, you have to put a broken token on top of it. There it is, look, field telephone, part of it is broken. So we're gonna to have to repair that. We're gonna to have to trace where those wires are going and repair them. That's detail. Now, to use the field telephone is gonna take two guys, communications you see, one making the call, the other taking the call. Heavy detail here. So the shoveling snow is complete. The two guys that we used go into the tired section. The snow indicator goes back to the middle. Now, repair. We had two guys on that, and that's what we need, two guys. We can remove one damage. Do we remove it from our defenses? Do we repair part of the gun? This is always so difficult. I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna repair this part of the wall here, defensive position A. Now the thing is though, that doesn't go out of the game. It goes into the hit bag. Oh yes, and why? Because when the German artillery open up in later phases, those walls could be damaged again. Of course they could. 
And these two guys go into the tired area. I think I've used too many people. <laughs> oh, am I going to have too many tired people? Okay. The only other guy we've got on the, oh no, we have Inspire down here, the officer. So I could move the morale marker up one level because our officer is inspiring guys. That's right, of course he is. So let's move the morale marker up one level there, look, into the first green section. But our officer is now tired as well. He's been whipping people into shape. So now our final action space for this round is our supply run. Now remember, it's, let's have a look at the weather. You always have to check the weather. It's sunny. So we can move up to six spaces. So out into the outside of the fort, which supplies is he going to go for? At the moment, there's, oh, I left him on from the demo. I'll take him away because at the moment, there's no German patrols there. So this guy here has to go on a supply run. I'm going to go for supply type supplies. These ones here. So six spaces. One, two, three, four five and he can pick up his supply and he now waits to the next turn to make the run back we're nearly at the end of this first turn every single turn regardless of phase you do a morale check so let's look at our morale let's look at the modifiers are there any negative modifiers is it a red day a red day is signified down, by the way, on the turn track. It isn't a red day. Out of supplies, no. Defenders in the waiting area, that's of the infirmary, no. Per defender in the morgue, no. Per German infantry in red sectors, no. So we are left on plus one in the green, which is good. So draw two high morale cards and resolve one. So I go over to the high morale deck, okay? Here's the number of cards, a ton of cards in here. I draw the top two. And I can choose which one I'm going to use. Let's have a look at them. They mean different things depending on your phase. Look, mobilization and first attack phase, siege one, siege two. We're on mobilization. I can add one miss counter to the hit bag, okay? Or I could gain one supply. At this stage of the game, we desperately need to build up our supplies. I'm going to use this one. This one will get shuffled back into the pack. So I will gain one supply. Place it in our supplies. This card is now discarded. And as soon as you've resolved morale, it's on a bungee. It bounces back to zero. Do you see, so everything you do throughout a turn will stretch that upwards, improve our morale, or drag it downwards to lower our morale, but it'll always bounce back to the middle once you've resolved it. And now the final bit. Do you remember this little bit down here on the turn track? There, where we check to see if there are any German Wehrmacht symbols on the turn, and there is, there's two. So, we again go back to the map. We take the German patrol bag, and I'm using the blue one. Aren't these bags good? And we draw two per instruction. I think there's about a dozen or so in the bag. We draw two. Two patrols. Turn them over. That's a number five. And that's a number four. Go up to the map. And remember, it's color coded. Mobilization phase is the green one. So one of them goes on position four. And the other one goes on position five. Okay, so you can see how awkward that is. They're starting to block off the various routes I can take for this supply dump here. And that's the end of turn one, mobilization phase. Now next for our demonstration, we go on to the first attack 
phase. There's an additional mechanic within this that you didn't get in mobilization. So we'll check that out. Now, draw a card from the correct phase, remember. Now we're on first attack. And again, just like in the mobilization deck, there are 12 cards in this deck, shuffled for each game. And during the first attack phase, we're only going to draw three of them. Again, huge replayability because you don't know what's going to happen for each event. We draw the first card. Put the others back. Let's take a look. And here's the Germans starting to move up to the woods. First of all, just like last time, I hope you can see that. Just like last time, we changed the weather. It's gone back to cloudy. So we can now move only up to five spaces on the board. Darn it, we add two patrols. There, look, bomber thumb, add two German patrols. So let's do that. Patrol bag. And this time, they'll get added to the correct color coded row because we're now in first attack, so it's this row. What do we have? Look at the numbers on the back. We have a two, oh, a two and a one. <laughs> ah, okay, so one gets added there and one gets added there. That's a bummer. You can see how they're starting to block these spaces. That one's completely blocked by the way now. So we're gonna get forced to sneak past or whatever with our supplies. And it says there, look, the flavor on the card. The Germans are spreading out in the landscape surrounding the fortress, closing in on our position. And they are. They're going to be pushing us up the hill back towards the fortress. We can do our recruitment. And this is the last phase, by the way, for recruitment, for gathering more troops. I'm going to miss that for now because you know how to do that. That icon there, we have to add four infantry. Let's do that. So here's the infantry from last turn, because I'm halfway through first attack and we've swapped the card over by the way. <laughs> this is the first attack phase, it's morphed. And we still have two German infantry here standing and we have one that was suppressed. The card told us to add four German infantry and you add them to the waiting area at the bottom. But the waiting area at the bottom will only take a maximum of five, so, we place two, and the other two have to move up to sector two. By the way, at the end of the day, if any German troops are in the red sector, this close to our position, we'll lose morale. So already the Germans have gone boom. They're coming up the hill, they're pushing us back. Now what happens? It's the German infantry attack, and now we're dice rolling. And you dice roll from the bottom upwards. The suppressed one isn't gonna do anything, but we need four die rolls for these guys here. So let's do that. Four die. Oh, okay. Now then, look here. There's a hit column and a move column. A roll of three to four, moves troops up into the move column. A roll of five or six moves them into the hit column. We have a six. One moves into the hit column. Whoops, he's fell over. They're all falling over. Three and four next. Well, we had two threes and a four. And this is what I didn't want. <laughs> it means all of them move into the move column. Ones and twos, by the way, wouldn't have counted. They'd have got stuck and stayed there. They're finding their way through the gullies. Now we have to roll for these two guys here who are in the waiting area of this sector. Roll two dice for them. Oh, not good, six and a four. The six is gonna move into the hit column. The four, the four is gonna move into the move column. This is the first time in the game where I started to feel the pressure. I started to feel desperate. I really did feel 
as if, my God, they're coming closer, they're moving onto our position. We're under assault, we're under attack. Time to brew a cup of tea. And as Sean Connery would have said, <laughs> we've been dropped miles from our intended target. The radios don't work. I've got lunatics coming out of the woods. And you think a cup of tea will help? Well, it can't do any harm, sir. Yes, that's the spirit. So what happens now? Look, these two columns, this is a hit column. This is a move column. The hit column fire at us. <laughs> we subtract our defense value, which, thank goodness, has gone up to one. So one of those potential hits bounced off our walls, but the other one got through. <laughs> the first guy on the right is hit. We'll come to him in a second. The guys in the move column move up. He moves into the charge position. These guys move into the waiting area of sector one. And that's what I didn't want to happen. The other guys move back into their waiting area. The suppressed guy from last time stands up. And now this guy does a charge. He's right on the wall. <laughs> he kills the leftmost defender. Sorry, no, wrong. He injures the leftmost defender. I'm putting it with our other injured one there. He himself is killed, removed from the game. And that's why you don't want them to get to the charge position because it's an automatic kill. It's a, oh, I keep saying kill, an automatic hit of one of our defenders. So now, what happens to our two injured guys? There they are. There's our two injured guys from that last attack. We roll a dice for each of them. Oh, a two and a four. Don't like the two because they'll each now take up a bed. One of them will go in position two. It's gonna take longer for him to get to the top and recover. The other one goes in position four in the second bed. And now we start placing troops again. But the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is fire at the Germans. We've gotta fight back, right? Roll a D6 for each of our two soldiers. A five and a two. A two will suppress. A five will kill. I had the field telephone there, didn't I? Now, if that position was covered, let's say uh, by these two guys here, I could have got plus one on each die roll. In this instance, it wouldn't have made a difference. But if that was repaired, I could suppress two more. Now, of course, we would lay troops out again, doing their various actions, as many troops as we can afford anyway. For instance, I'm not going to do all that now, but we would certainly uh, cover our defensive positions again, like so. We'd almost certainly send out another patrol to get more supplies, new, another supply run. We would do some repairing, definitely finish off repairing that gun position. And looking at it now, I would definitely have put my medic Although it can be any volunteer to treat one patient in bed, but a medic, as a symbol there, can do it twice. Now, as regards the infirmary, just say we've moved on, I've put more casualties into the infirmary now, as you can see, and the infirmary will start to fill up, by the way. If there isn't a spare bed, then they have to fill in the waiting area. The medic here can treat two levels so for instance uh that can go up one level towards being medically fit and he could go up one level towards being medically fit but then even if you didn't put someone there you have to do relapse and recovery here and the first thing you move all patients in the waiting area down one level this guy, there's nowhere for him to go. The beds are full. 
he falls into the morgue. He's died. This one goes down one level and all patients in beds go up one level. You've got someone in the morgue. And again, that's an amazing mechanic. Let's show a slightly more positive phase. I'm going to just move him up to there, let's say. Uh, I'm going to move him down like so. So we start the medic working. He can move two levels. And for me, he would go one, two, like so. Then we have relapse and recovery. All patients in the waiting area move down one level. And everybody in the infirmary move up one level. He moves up and he's cured, goes to the tired area. He moves up, he'll be cured next turn. He moves up, there's now a free bed. He moves across to that position in the free bed. Luckily, because he was close to ending up in the morgue. They're in the corridors, they're in the dark corridors as the bombardment goes on upstairs, waiting to be treated. And I found this, just like the infantry attacks and the patrols, to feel so realistic. They really applied the pressure. You can't be everywhere at once, your resources are thin. And I could imagine those dark corridors with maybe a single source of light, trying to get our guys back up onto the ramparts. Um, something else I quickly wanted to do, let's say you brought a guy back, he's got back from a supply run, he goes into the tired sector, and what supplies he brought back? Well, whatever supply he brings back, you're gonna add to your morale here, which is good. You're gonna increase suspicion, which is not good. In other words, the German patrols are even more alert. You're going to add two supplies to your stock plus special. And what it means by special, either you're going to add in this instance one of the supply or maybe morale up here. So each token has a special element to it. This one is an extra supply. So we're going to add two, three supplies. We've got four, so we need to go up to seven. So I'll put that one in five. And we've got two more like that. Seven supplies. That's that supply run over. Finally, let's see what happens during a siege. So now we're starting siege one. Siege one will be just two turns. Siege two will be another three turns. So total of five turns of siege. And my gosh, this is where the pressure really, really ramps up. At the end of the previous phase, first attack phase, we finally remove that overlay. And we're now on the main defensive board. And we'll take a close look at that in a second. Something else we had to do at the end of that phase, we take three of the artillery counters and place them on the board. Here they are. The artillery has arrived. It's been set up and it's going to start to bombard our fortress. It's a moment in the game because all recruitment chances are now over. We're all now hunkered down in the fortress and surrounded by infantry coming up the hill and artillery bombarding from the outskirts. Again, we start by picking an event card. These are the Siege 1 cards. Plenty of cards. Siege 1, we're only going to choose two of these. So again, I know I keep saying it, but my gosh. And look at the, look at that. A German gun being dragged into position there. There they are, closer, firing up the hill as they assault. Stunning. There's the village burning. So, we draw one of those cards to start the day. And again, in this phase, they're different. Now, the weather is snow. 
which reduces our movement. We move the snow marker to the right. And we draw two tiles from the hip bag. Straight off. <laughs> no. Why? Well, two bombs that were reported as duds just exploded. So you draw two tiles from the hit bag and resolve those. Let's do it. Let's just take a quick look to see what would happen if we actually did that now. Draw two tiles from the hit bag. Boom, boom. We have, ah, oh, defensive position C. This one has been hit, boom. That guy is now in the infirmary. He's injured. Let's roll a die, four, injury level four. There he is in that bed. This is an artillery counter. So the artillery marker is moved up one position. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, and that's just the start now. It also gives us different actions to do. Look, the actions along the bottom here. For the first time now, you've got an aircraft. So you add the rightmost aircraft tokens. These are going to come and assault us. Add the aircraft tokens to the hit bag. Okay. Then the artillery on the board fire, boom, boom, boom. And they're firing over now onto our position. So we consult the artillery track, which is over here. Let me just show you. And you look at the right most exposed number, the highest number on the track, which is five. And that's because we put artillery onto the board. As more artillery comes onto the board, these numbers obviously are gonna get higher. At the moment it's five. So that's how many counters we draw from the hit bag. The artillery has fired onto our position. They've got five hits. Let's see what we've drawn. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh. airstrike. <whistles> Boom, one supply has gone. Remove a supply. Defensive position A, boom. Defensive position B, boom. These guys now go to the infirmary. Gun number one, boom. One portion of it is covered by a damage marker. Field telephone, boom. So part of that is broken again. A devastating strike there. So that's how the hit bag is used. And what we need to do is strike at the artillery with our own guns or send our patrols out to try and counter them. Strike at the airfield with our artillery, but we've only got one shot now from this gun look, and we haven't dug gun number two out of the snow yet. If we had, we'd, we'd have a lot more chances to hit the airfield, which could remove air counters. And finally, add four more German infantry to the attack. So you add your four infantry, one, Two, that was a maximum of five. So the others have to move up to the next column. We roll our dice, the infantry move. For instance, if one guy goes in the hit column, the hit column is now in the center look. So let's say it moves like that. Let's say that was in the move column, that was in the move column, and these two were nothing. So you add up the guys, as I said before, that are in the hit column, which is now the centre one, one, two, three, minus our defence, which is one, two hits. All our defenders have already been bombed or ground down by that artillery hit. 
So it's going to hit that defender. We've now no defenders to hit back with. If we did, for instance, have someone in one of the positions He could use the machine gun because the machine gun on this part of the board is now available. But it's really old and it jams. But you roll a die for your machine gun on a one to three. You can suppress three of these guys. Boom, boom, boom. A four, five or six and you hit three of these guys. So your defenses are now quite strong. Let's move three of those guys. Oh, by the way, this guy that was on the move sector, he moves up to there. And look, here and here, if they roll a two or a two and a three, you now have a grenade column. Grenade, hit or move. So they can now lob grenades and that can destroy our defensives. Finally, you do get a chance to do reckless defense. This guy's jumped over the wall and <laughs> he will automatically hit two. Bang, bang. But in doing so, reckless defense, he'll injure himself and he will end up in the infirmary. And by the way, after you fired the machine gun, it jams. So you have to unjam it for next time. This becomes epic. This whole board here could absolutely fill up. This turn, we would have to repair our positions here by using these guys on the board, get them repaired, and then fill the positions again with whoever is available to do so. Then we get a chance to fire at the enemy. Now, notice I didn't mention before, the various grades of defenders can fire at different ranges. Look, see this down here? The recruit, the blue one, can only fire at range one. The hunter can fire to range two. The officer can fire to range three. The soldiers, the red ones, can fire to range four. So even there, it's taking account of the different abilities. You're having to choose pretty wisely who you put in what position and which sector they're going to fire at. And of course, you still have your artillery, which we haven't even covered yet. But you can fire at the airfield to gain morale, put miscounters, now that's what the miscounters are for, into that hit bag. Or, as I said before, to remove aircraft from that lineup. Or your artillery can fire at a row on the map to hit patrols and artillery. It'll remove artillery from the board back onto the track, reducing the number of hits you're going to have to draw out of that hit bag. Or you can fire at various sectors here on the assault track. The pressure towards the end of this game is really palpable. And every tiny detail is dripping with theme. And not one action that you're gonna choose to take out is ever wasted. It's not ever superfluous. Every single action, every decision you make has an impact on the game and towards your final outcome. Where are you gonna concentrate your resources? You know you can't do everything. What a game. I loved playing this game. It was so different to anything else I've ever played before. It has so many different elements. Now, fair enough, it's been likened to many other games, both war games and non-war games. I'm a little bit reticent to do that. But out of everything I've heard so far, yeah, because of the different phases and how each phase is so different, enemy coast ahead in that regard. 
Valiant Defense series, only slightly. That's an amazing series of games all on its own. And yes, you are valiantly defending a position, but it's different. This war of mine, yeah, searching around, digging out for supplies and equipment. But that wasn't just added on. It was real. That's what they were doing. They were digging through the snow. This fort was buried and had been for year after year of snowfall. Something else I did think of, by the way, dead of winter. If any of you have played that, where you have to go out and hunt for supplies and things like that. But no, it's, it's everything. But you'll quickly realize once you start playing it that it started with a historical theme. This game had to play in a certain way. So the mechanics, the order that they're played in, the different actions you can take, all had to first of all be historically accurate. And they are. The decisions, where are you gonna put your major resources? What actions are you gonna carry out? are so difficult to make. And to be fair, honestly, you're not gonna know. For three or four games, you're not gonna know. Only slowly will you get the rhythm of the game as all these different phases play out as one. And maybe, just maybe, realize next time, ah, I should have concentrated more on, on that. I should have done a bit more of this. It's been one of the best solo experiences for a, a long, long time. I got so excited screaming out loud in places, <laughs> but thoroughly enjoyed the whole experience. That was The Halls of Hegra from Tom Pet Games, available right now on Kickstarter. Go take a look. It really deserves your support. If you're a solo war gamer, this should be in your collection. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Solo Board Gaming and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.